Hi everyone, today I'm working on a Citroen C4 uh, 2014 and we got the custom concern of um, multiple lights on dash so let's confirm that, let's start the engine right so nothing now there we go and it looks like we have no lights on dash whatsoever at this point custom concern was that uh, when uh, driving you get uh, adaptive cruise control fault you get uh, abs traction control light all the lights are on so uh, at this point as you can see we cannot confirm that so uh, let's put uh, the scanner on let's see what fault code we've got and uh, we'll go from uh, from there Right, so I've hooked up my scope onto the sensor itself. As a remote drive, so I can spin this this disc freely. And now start this recording. Right, so you can see we've got like 11 volts there. So if I'm spinning the wheel now, you can see the signal there. So I'm gonna try to spin it constantly with my hand. See. see, there's only that double gap there. You see that? That should not be there. It should be a continuously on and off, on and off all the time. So let's stop them now. Let's go back a bit. That's what I'm talking about. That gap there. You can see there is a lot of grease from the drive shaft and a lot of um, uh, metallic that just stuck onto the uh, disc. So we're gonna clean that properly and then we're gonna redo the uh, test. Right, so I've cleaned everything. I've removed the sensor as well, cleaned the rust underneath the sensor as well because there was a bit of rust there, just in case, because if there's rust underneath, it will lift the sensor and it will modify the air gap. Now, as you can see, it's all nice and clean, no more grease on it, no more metallic uh, bits. So, uh, let's try this again and let's see how the uh, signal looks like. Alright, so we're back on uh, our scope, so let's start spinning the uh, wheel and you can see we've got regular drop out in the signal right so I can figure out which area it is here yeah here so somewhere between this and this area the magnetic ring is definitely damaged so, unfortunately this one will require a new wheel bearing as the magnetic ring comes with the bearing itself. So let me try to see if we can have a better look at this. So we're gonna switch to AC and we're gonna go to one volt maybe. That should be all right. And if we spin the wheel now, we should be able to see that there, that drop out. That's constant, every time. So that's, this is the wheel bearing. Let me see if I can manage to get it exactly. And I'll mark it as well. So, let me try so if we do this. Boom, let's start it from here. So let's mark this one here. Oh. oh, come on. I'll mark this one there. Okay. And let's move. There. So. It's somewhere in this area 
over this area. So somewhere in this area, let's uh, explain the customer, let's fit the bearing and then let's do the retest again. Right, I've got both bearings out. I've got a new bearing, the old bearing. This is the area where we, f we found the scope being uh, not right. So I'm gonna use a magnetic paper to put it on top. And you can see here, that's all nice. Looks all right around here. But here, see, the, see the, there's no space in between them. You can see it, I hope you can see it. Now let's move on to the new one. Let me make that flash again. On the new one, you can see everything is nicely spaced all around. So I go back onto the uh, old one. Again, you can see here, there's no spacing as you see here. You can see here very well how it's here and how it's here and this is exactly where we found the scope all right so the bearing is back so i put the drive shaft so now i can spin the wheel easily i'm gonna just screw down in there so let's back probe the uh connector again i should go that's going in there and the other one, so we should have. Hang on a second. Let's put here. Let's turn this channel B off because we don't need it. So we'll just turn it off. So we're going to use this one here. We got zero volts there now. So now we're going to plug this one in here, the ground. It should go to 12 volts. So let's. Uh, so it's 200 milliseconds. Let's do one DC first. As you can see, it's all nice and clear. But let's make it way better. Let's switch to AC. And let's go to scale over one volt. Okay. And uh, let's extend that a bit. And let's try, let's spin it now. Now it should be better. Okay. I'm gonna need a bigger scale because it's hard to spin with the wheel on. Okay, that was better. So, I'm gonna do a full rotation on the next screen. Let's have a look. Here we go. As you can see, yes, it does more than a rotation, and uh, I could not see any gaps in it. Uh, that is great, that is absolutely great. That's what we expect to see no gaps whatsoever. As you can see, there, all looking good, right, guys. That's the video for today. I just wanted to show you how I end up with the conclusion that that bearing is uh, really faulty. Like this, you will never go wrong. And this is why I believe a scope is a very good tool for uh, this kind of fault finding. Instead of guessing, you can actually find the fault properly. Right guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and I will see you on my next video.